Hey there, this is Mark Forte, Senior Solutions Specialist with ToonBoom with an expertise in compositing. In this video, we will look at the node view and how we can keep it organized by grouping nodes together and arranging our connections. We will also talk about the different types of composites in a later video. You'll notice that I have a camera view with a character and several images that make up the background. If I look at the node view, you'll see this character with several nodes underneath to create a highlight or tone on a character. And then down here we have the images that make up a background plugged into the main composite bar. Now when you have several characters in a node view, this can get cluttered up pretty quick, especially when you're using a lot of compositing nodes. What we want to do is create groups that will not only help to declutter the node view, but will also be reusable if we'd like to, say, apply the same treatment to another character. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a marquee selection around my compositing nodes. And then I can either right click, group, group selection, or I can hit the control G hotkey for Windows or command G on Mac. This creates a group that can then change the name if I hit the yellow square and type in a new name here. Notice the input connections up here and the output connection. If I'd like to get inside this group, I just have to hit the rightmost arrow and I'm inside the group. Now each group has what's called a multi-port in and a multi-port out. These are the inputs that come from the top and what comes outside. And these are matching what we saw outside already. By default, Harmony likes to connect any open transformation ports to create a multi-port in port in case you needed to control things outside. But in this case, I actually don't need any of these, so I'll safely disconnect them. Notice when I disconnect the last one, the port goes away. Now we have a single port coming in, which is the image of the character, all of our compositing done to it afterwards, and one image coming out. If we want to see what happens outside, we just have to go to the top view, or we can hit this little arrow key up here. Notice now that there's only one out. Not only are groups good to declutter, but we can then reuse these for other characters. If I had another character, I could simply copy paste it and plug that character in. This in our library. If you go to the library tab, you can create your own library by creating a new folder in Explorer or in the Finder for Macintosh. Simply create a new folder, name it whatever you like, then go inside your library right click choose open library browse to that folder's location and select folder this now keeps this item of the library open for you to copy modules to and drag from now you'll notice there's a little padlock on this folder that's because if you work in a network environment you don't want two people to work on this at the same time so one person has to request access first Simply right click, choose right to modify, and you'll notice the padlock goes away. If someone's editing at the same time, you'll get a warning. So now we want to copy our treatment into our library. So I'll just do Control C on PC or Command C on Mac, and Control V on PC or Command V on Mac to paste. We are now asked if we want to rename it. I'm just simply going to call it as it is, press OK. And once you're done, make sure to right click and write to modify to lock it back. Now I can reuse this treatment in any other scene by clicking and dragging in, and I can then connect it to any comp uh, character that I'd like. Let's now focus on the background. We have all of these nodes going into the main composite bar, and they sometimes come in one on top of the other. So not only do we want to reorganize this, but we want to simplify the connections down here. With every node selected, I'm going to right click, group, group selection with composite. 
The shortcut for this is Control Shift G in Windows or Command Shift G on Mac. You can also do the same thing by selecting them in the timeline and choosing that from a right click menu. Notice that it's now got one output as opposed to all the several ones that were coming in before, but several inputs. Let's go inside the group to see what happened. So you'll notice that all of the nodes are now connected to a composite and then every one of them has an input for the multiport in. Now I can start to reorganize this by moving them individually, but that can take a while. So if you have the node view buttons open, and if you don't, you can simply right click and make sure that node view has a check mark. I'm going to select my drawings. And up here, you'll notice there's these two buttons. One is to organize the node view up and the other one to node view down. I'll choose this one. This brings up parameters that you can set. The defaults are fairly good, so I'm going to press OK. And you'll notice that all the drawings now splayed out to be more organized and not one on top of the other. Now I want to get rid of all these connections, so the quick way that I like to use is to delete the multi-port in and bring a new one in. I'm going to go to my node library, type in multi, and grab that one in. Next, I'm going to select all of my nodes, and I'll hit Control shift p or Command-Shift-P on a Mac to create pegs for each of these drawings that have the name of the drawing. With all the pegs still selected, I'll simply hit Control p or Command-P on a Mac, and this will add a single peg to control all of my nodes. The last step is to drag that upper nub up into the multiport in so that we have an input. Now if we go back up one level, you'll notice that we have an input where we can simply select the group, hit control P, and we have a single nub to control the background. If I then want to scale this up, I can do so as a single control. And this organizes our node view much cleaner than the way we had it before.